We have been on this journey for a while, and I'm excited about some of the things that's going to be happening in the next few weeks that are coming here at New Hope Bible Church. And what I believe is this, God has a plan and a purpose for us regardless of what we see right now. Anybody believe that? It doesn't matter what you're seeing by. How many of us know that the Bible tells us we are to walk by and not by? How many of us always get that screwed up? Anybody? I admit, I admit, I get that thing messed up all the time because majority of the time, sometimes I find myself walking by sight and not by faith. And Jesus comes to his disciples, and I love what he says to his disciples. It's found in John chapter 16, verse 33. He says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have troubles, but take heart, I have overcome the what? Amen. How many of us know that none of us like the word trouble? Anybody? How many of us jump up and down and say, I love to be in a trial, I love to be in trouble? Not one of us. Is that the truth? Isn't that the truth? None of us are looking to be in trouble, but Jesus tells his disciples, look it, in this world, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have storms that come up against your life. You're going to have a mountain that looks impassable. You're going to have a giant that can stand before you and thinks he's going to destroy you. Anybody have felt some of that in your own life? We need to understand that in Isaiah chapter 26.3 it says, you will, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is steadfast because he what? He trusts in what? In you. The test of Christ is your, is your peace and it should rule our hearts. We need to understand there was a minister that one time, he's, he, what he did was this, he, he got a big piece of paper and in the paper, he put a small black dot in the center of that piece of paper. And he asked the men that he was ministering with, he says, what do you see when I hold up this piece of paper? Well, one man said he, all he saw was a dot. And he said, that's correct. He asked the rest of the, rest of the men that were there at that uh, group meeting, said, what else do you see? There was silence. No, not one person could see anything else but the dot. He said, you missed the most important part was the piece of paper. What happens is this. The enemy comes to us and he, he deceives us by only seeing what the dot is on the piece of paper. But we forget the whole piece of paper that is there that what God has done for us besides just that little dot that the enemy wants us to focus on is the dot in our life. Anybody there? What happens is we focus on the things that's happened in our past. The enemy comes to you and tells you you're no good. He comes to you and tells you you're going to be a failure your whole life. And we forget to see the things that God has done for us in our past that God is going to do for us in our present. Anybody with me there? And what the enemy does is he tries to make us focus on everything as a little dot. And God's saying there's a much bigger picture that he wants us to focus on, especially this morning. And that bigger picture is, look at this. We know that when Jesus was speaking to his disciples, he began to tell, tell the disciples about a parable. And the parable went like something like this. How many know about the parable of the wise builder and the foolish builder? And then he said, and Jesus goes on, he tells them about the man who takes my word and begins to build on it, who digs deep in that foundation and builds upon it, even though their storms are going to come up against that house. The house stood because the man built upon God's word. Anybody with me? Amen. So we need to understand that even though the man who was doing everything right. He took, a, he took God's word. He built the foundation properly. There was still storm that came up against that man's house, but the house stood. Anybody understand what I'm saying here this morning? We are going to go through trials. We're going to go through storms. We're going to see mountains in our life. We're going to see giants in our life. But we need to take heart. God says, I have overcome the world, and so also you also will overcome the world. Anybody with me? 
We need to have this in our assurance in our heart. When we trust in God with everything in our heart. How many of us are there yet? I can honestly say there, there are times that yes, I can fully have put my full trust in God and watch his hand after hand come and do some things that nobody could have removed that mountain. There was no one could have removed that mountain. Only God could have removed that mountain. And you know, there's storms if all of us have come. See, God does not take us away from, sometimes God, how many knows though, sometimes God does calm the storms in our lives. Yeah. And there's sometimes when God allows the storms to come in life, but he calms us. Yes. That he calms us. How many know, anybody ever seen a boat that has a big anchor on it? How many know boats have anchors? Yeah, we see. <laughs> The anchor's only as good as if they, if they test it out once in a while. How many know that's very true? They'll throw that thing out there in the midst of a storm. See how good that anchor really is, anchored to the thing. How many of us know that Jesus is our anchor? Amen. Jesus is our anchor. Brothers and sisters, when we're going through a storm, I'm going to tell you what. Throw out your anchor. Go ahead. Throw it out. And watch God s stop that thing you're not, so you're not moving. You're not being persuaded by what you see. Because you have your trust and your hope in Christ Jesus. And that's where we put all our trust and our hope in him. He is our anchor in the midst of a storm. Amen. Even though it says in Proverbs 10, 25, the whirlwind passes, so is the wicked, so no more. But the righteous is everlasting foundation. When the storms have swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous stand firm forever. That's what God's word says. We need to understand there's times that we all are going to experience some times in our, all of our lives that's going to be sometimes questioning what's going on in our life. This morning, I want to look at a few things that found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And we all know this story, because if you were in the Bible stories, you would know about David and Goliath. Goliath. Anybody remember that story about David and Goliath? How many know David and Goli Goliath was nine feet tall? Anybody? That's a pretty tall guy, right? That's a big man. That's just one big dude. When we're looking at things, there was a woman... That, in 1952, her name was Florence Chadwick. She was attempting to swim across the Catalina Islands to the California coast and attempt to see the, break the records for covering that distance. When she entered the water, it was a heavy fog that had set itself in a path before her. Blinded by the fog, she became disoriented and discouraged and gave up. When she finally decided she couldn't go on, her escorts in the boat, boat helped her out of the water. The escort feared to tell her this. The truth was she was less than 300 yards from her goal. Her only reply after learning how close she actually was, was all I could see was hopelessness. Her clouded vision kept her from, from victory. All she, all, and how we are challenged when we, when we stand on our own style, when we always, when we're walking by sight. It's sometimes when we walk in by sight, it clouds our vision. It clouds what we see. When we have a limited vision, any situation you are, this, I love this, what this says. In any situation, what you are determined by what you see, what you see determines what you do. Anybody? Anybody there? How many of us made some bad decisions because of what we saw? How many of us jumped the gun by what we saw and we make find out it was a bad decision? How many know it's the, God is calling us to not walk by sight, but by faith? And we have to put our full trust and belief in him. A limited view of faithlessness brings about fear, which results in a dominance by the enemy. I want to say something to you is this. How many of you, and you, I know you all heard me say this. The enemy, has a, the enemy cannot deceive you unless he, let me, let me read this, how I wrote this down. It's, the devil knows he cannot defeat you if he can't deceive you. That's right. That's right. How many know that? Amen. The devil knows he can't defeat you unless he, if he can't deceive you. How many know that the enemy, a lot of times I found Christians doing it. If I was to say to you, a red light is blue, you would look at me and say, that's crazy. I know it's red, right? Unless you're colorblind, right? 
the enemy will do this. He will give you that slight thing just to get you off track. See, here's the truth. And he does that little slight, and now you're over here. And now he gets to begin that foothold in your life, not trusting or believing God. God's really not going to do that for you, Michelle. Honestly, he's not going to heal you. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But the enemies, can, what happens is, I have pray, how many have prayed and prayed and prayed and you're not seeing God answer that prayer yet? How many know Abraham believed God, but he didn't get to see the fulfillment of the promises, but he believed God? Yes, Anybody? Amen. Anybody? I truly believe that God is going to do great and marvelous things here at New Hope Bible Church. I believe that without, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even question that. I just know that. Seventy years, a couple weeks ago, we celebrated our 70th year here. And we have something going down in a few, in another month or so about celebrating that. That people believed what God spoke to them, gave them a vision, gave them a hope for new hope. And though, even though they did not get to see the, the complete fulfillment of it, they believed God. They put their trust in God. And we are reaping the benefits by what they believed and trusted in God. When we look, it says fear comes when we live by sight and not by faith. The view of faithless is a view of limited sight. Limited view because the, because the spirit is not involved. Only the natural or physical. When the children of Israel were being challenged by Goliath, all they saw was what? The giant out there. That's all they saw. They saw nothing else but a giant out there. That's limited sight. How many know that? I have been talking to you about staying connected to the power of the Holy Spirit. How many of us know it's the same Spirit that raised Christ from the... Where does it dwell? Do you believe that? It's the same Spirit. It's the same exact Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. This is where you got to begin to understand. It's the same Spirit that David slew Goliath with. It's the same Spirit that now dwells in you. Sometimes we think in the Bible terms, these men and women, they're in the Bible, they, we just think they're supernatural human beings. Anybody? The problem is they weren't. The problem is that we look at them that they were superhumans, but they weren't. We are just like they were. They got the same, we have the same spirit that they have that dwells in us, that powers us. When we need to understand, when David began to see what was going on, he began to question why are they living by what they're seeing and not living by what faith says, that the Jehovah God of Israel is there. Anybody? Everybody? That's right, amen. How many, the word defile, how many know Goliath came out and defiled the armies of Israel? Anybody? It says he did it. It says this. It says that a champion named Goliath from Gath came out to the Philistine, came out out of the Philistine, and he was over nine feet tall. He had bronze and helmet going on, blah, blah, blah. And Goliath stood, going to chapter, verse 8, and Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? Are you not chosen servants of Saul? Choose a man today. See, he was defiling God. He was challenging the children of Israel. You serve a God, come out and fight me. Anybody? Anybody? The word defy means to taunt and to ridicule. That's what the words taught. That's what the, he was doing. He was ridiculing the God of Israel. 
and the enemy will ridicule the God that you serve. I'm telling you right now. He will tell you God's not going to do it. God's not powerful to do it. And who are you? Anybody? We're a child of God. You are a child of God. We have authority and we have power. Do you believe that? That's why the Bible says you can say to that mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and well, what do what? What will it do? It will what? Obey you. It's not because you got some supernatural power, because, but you got, what you got is this. You got the indwelling of the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's what you have. Amen. You have the same spirit, the exact same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that dwells in you. Sometimes the enemy comes to it. Maybe your giant right now this morning is this. Maybe it's something that's happened in your past that you cannot get over. I am amazed that children of, children of God are still suffering from their past because the enemy never wants you to live out of your past. He wants you to continue to live in your past. How many know God's more interested in your future than he is your past? Anybody? You got to believe that. You have to believe that. You have to learn that God is interested in what's tomorrow, today and tomorrow, than he is what's happened yesterday. If you have sin, guess what you're supposed to do? Repent. How many? Anybody? Anybody there with me? Repent. Get right back with God. Get in that right, steadfast spirit and begin to move out in the process that God has called you into. Living by sight. How many, know, I love this. Living by sight, we are defeated before the battle even starts. Anybody? When we live by sight, we're defeated. See, the children of Israel were already defeated by, by, by looking at Goliath. They were already totally defeated. Even Saul was totally defeated before the battle even began. Anybody with me? How many of us can really relate to that? We see a giant. We see a mountain. We see a storm. And we're defeated way before we even begin to put our trust in God. So many of us walk by sight, and we need to start learning to walk by faith. Before the battle starts to even flee, they said it says this. It says, when they seen, they, they said, oh, excuse me. The Israelites were probably, no, that's not what I want to talk about. When we see, when we are seen by sight only, we quit merely by sight. The real tragedy happens when we try to pass off our defeated attitudes on others. Think about this. Saul was already defeated by Goliath. Anybody? Anybody? Do you believe that? How many believe that? He was already defeated. He's already defeated. And so were the children of Israel defeated. How many of us have met people that God has given you maybe a vision or a hope or something in your life? Anybody? All of us. Probably something. So all of us have probably had something. God has spoken to somebody, something in our life. And you go and you share that with somebody, right? Anybody? Has anybody done that before? You go and share that. I, I, I got great hopes that I want to do something for God. I got great hopes for my life that I'm going to do something. And all of a sudden you go and share it. And that brother or that sister, your mom, your dad, your teacher, I don't care who they were. They begin to say, you can't do that. You can't do that. It's impossible for you to do that. Anybody? Yeah. And all of a sudden, that hope and that thing that you had has been defeated before you even stepped out believing in God. Anybody? Amen. I'm going to tell you. When we stepped on this piece of property 16 years ago, we could have been defeated right off the bat. The man wanted, what, was a million bucks? Yeah, he originally won a million dollars just for the property. Twelve acres, one million dollars. Out of this world, crazy. A small little, little 
two-door church over there in Clarkson on the other side. We didn't have a million dollars. We had, we had a couple of nickels of rub together. But we had faith and hope that God said, you are going to move. You're going to move. So as we stepped on this land, said, God said, welcome home. This is your house. This is your home. This is what I'm going to give you. But we would have walked by sight. We would have said, there's no way, God, that we can get this piece of property. Even if we got the piece of property, we wouldn't even be able to build a house, God. Anybody? And God began to work things out. God began to say, hey, I got an idea. How about you give this guy a bunch of trees? How about you do some of this other stuff? And by doing this other stuff, we will be able to make a deal here. How many know that's God? That's God. Uh, anybody know that's God? Yes, this guy was a tree farmer. A Christmas tree farmer. He thinks, man, landscaping, I'm going to make millions of dollars because I got over 5,000 Christmas trees sitting out here. And I'm going to make all this money and I planted all this money. And I'm going to, it's worth a million dollars to me. And uh, trust me, this guy was pretty adamant. This guy was adamant. And God softened his heart. How many know that you had to clear this land to build a house? <laughs> and we said to him, let's make a deal. We'll give you 2,500 trees you can sell and we'll give you so much money for the property and you will be able to get... And this guy, yeah, that's a great idea. The guy cleared the land for us by selling the trees for us. He keeping the thing, and God worked out all this thing because we were not going to walk by sight. We were going to walk by faith. Amen. He cleared out the baseball field, by the way. We didn't even know we were going to have a baseball field. We had no idea we were going to have a baseball field. We had no idea what God was going to do. The pavilion out there where trees were out there. The ball field where trees out there. The building you're sitting in right now, there was trees on this piece of property. God said, hey, I got a plan. I got a plan. I tell you what, I'm going to have it. And by this way, this guy began to sell trees left and right. It was amazing. The trucks were coming in. Trucks were going out. Trees were being removed. Property was being cleared. And we didn't have to pay one penny. That's God. That's God. One penny. One penny. They had the land cleared. When it came to landscaping time, when it came to landscaping time, the county, how many know anybody been down in this old county park right here? Do you know they built, just so happened two years ago before we built on this piece of property, they built a beautiful camping site back there. But their bridge cannot allow these uh, septic tank companies to go through there because the truck is too heavy and the bridge is not, cannot hold it. To pump out all the septic tank fields over there, they can't get to it. So they came to us. And they say, if we could use your property, because there's a gate. How many know there's a gate at the very the back of the gate? Back way back of the fence. If we could use your property, let's make a deal. We will give you all the landscaping for free if you allow us to use your piece of property. Go figure, right? <laughs> Go figure, right? How many of us know that that's God? They gave us $60,000 in landscaping because, do you know, the township said, you got the landscape. You got every little thing. You know, they come out there and you say, you know, you got, you got to have a tree here, you got to have bushes here, you got to have this, you got to have this, that guy. How many know that they say the county comes out, say, Clarkson comes out and says, you got to have all this piece of, when you build property like this, you got to have, how many know you have to have a retention pond now? Did you, 100, 100 year flood. All these regulations. The man dug out the pond for us before we even got here. Tell, are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? God said this land would be yours. This property would be yours. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to dig the pond out there. I'm going to remove the trees for you. And I'm going to bring the landscaping company in here to landscape you. Anybody? That's what God does when you don't limit him, him. When you say, God, it's your house, it's your property, we're going to walk by faith and we're not going to walk by sight. Anybody? Amen. The storm comes in. We're saving thousands of dollars because we need a roof. <laughs> It's a dripping. It's a blowing off. Every time it was a windstorm, I'm going around, running around, picking up shingles. I thought we had frisbees going on out there one day. We had a fly, a fly on all over, green flying machine going on all over the place. God's happened, I'm not telling you. Now, I don't pray for storms, but a storm come through here and it beat the living daylights out of our roof. And the insurance company said, we got to replace your whole roof. $68,000 roof was placed on it and cost the church one penny. I mean, that's God. That's God. And I'm not saying we pray for storms. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm not trying we take, want to take the insurance company, but that's what insurance, that's what you do. You prepare for when things happen like that. That's God. God keeps speaking to my heart. You haven't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. You think you're impressed with that? Wait, you see what I got coming down the pipeline. You think you're impressed with that? I'm impressed. I tell you what, I'm impressed with that. But God keeps saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. You have seen nothing yet. Wait till you see what I'm going to do in the presence of my Holy Spirit here at New Hope Bible Church. Anybody want to say amen to that? And I don't even know where that went from. Okay, right. I am so sorry. When we have limited, unlimited view of the faithfulness, brings about courage, results in a total dominance over the enemy. How many know that's very true? Courage comes when we live by faith and not by sight. Courage comes because we have confidence in God's unlimited power. Unlimited power. You see, David's there and he's wondering, who the heck is this? this, this you, David, don't even, David doesn't even think about the guy, how big the guy is. There's no mention that David said, oh, that's a big dude. No, he says, who is this Philistine? Who is this the one who's defiling the Lord God Almighty? Who is this guy? That was David's response. David was response. They were saying, the Israelites, the other Israelites say, do you see this man? He's a giant who comes out. That's what their response of the, what they saw. David's response by faith was, who could dare defile God? I mean, are you with me here? Are you with me here? Well, the enemy wants you, might, the enemy wants you, might you think he's bigger than really what he is. I'm going to tell you what, uh-uh, uh-uh. Remember when Saul comes to David, when they find out, and David goes to see Saul, and Saul says, you can't, what was Saul's first verse, the first thing out of his mouth? You can't do that. How many here, anybody? You can't do that because you're only a kid. You're only a child. You're only a youth. And this, this giant out there, he's been a fighting machine since his youth. He's just been, he's, he's well trained. Anybody? I know what David says. David's so cool, he just sits back and says, well, let me tell you, Saul. There was a bear and there was a lion that came out. And he wanted to steal one of my little sheep. And I went after that lion, and I went after that bear, right? How many of us have know that story? And I went after that bear and that lion, and guess what I did? I killed both of those suckers. One rose up against me, and I slew him. See, David said, I remember what God did for me. Anybody ever wrestle a lion before? None of us could. How about a bear? Now, I know I have seen bear in Smoky Mountain National Park, and I have kept my distance from him or her or whatever it is. I didn't check out whether it was a male or a female. But I know one thing. I gave, I gave due 
respect to that thing, that black bear. And I know for one thing, he was a big boy or a big girl. I didn't know which one. But I was not going to challenge that bear. But David was not as scared to go after that bear and that lion because he had courage in what? In God. See, David began to remember what God had done for him in the past. And this is where we, as children of God, children of Israel, how many of us are children of Israel? We are. People are here at New Hope Bible Church, listen to me. You need to go, and when the enemy tells you you can't do it, you need to remember what God did for you in the past. You need to remember. You need to go back and remember that lion. You need to remember that bear. You need to remember that storm that you were in the midst of. You need to remember that mountain that looked impassable. You need to remember that giant that God slew for you right there that present time. God can do the same that he did past then, and he's going to do the same now. See, David remembered those things. David had courage because he remembered what God did for him in the past. Anybody with me? I love how David tells Saul, he said, look at Saul, I got this covered. I got this covered. I got this covered. You see, brothers and sisters, we need to encourage each other. I'm telling you, if you're going through a storm right now, I need to be in there with you with the anchor. I'll help you throw the anchor over. Anybody? Anybody? Brothers and sisters, we need each other. I, I need to lean on you and you need to lean on me. We need to lean on each other. How many know that's very true? If you're in the midst of a storm, I'm going to help you. If you can't pick up that anchor, I'm going to help you go over there and help you pick that anchor and throw it over the board. I'm going to stand with you in prayer, believe in God, that God is going to intercede for you, that God is going to save you in the midst of that storm, because you know why? Because I believe God. I'm going to be with you standing there in that mountain. You look at that mountain, and you say, uh -uh. be bound and be cast in the sea, and it will obey you. I'm going to pray with you to believe that. If you're standing before a giant right now that looks like Goliath, I'm going to pray that God gives you the stones to kill that giant. I'm going to test God. You know what? You, gotta, you gave David those. How many know David went out and found those nice five stones? He prepared, you know, he prepared himself even, before, even beyond Goliath. One for Goliath and four for his brothers. <laughs> they want to come out after me. Come on, big boys. I'm ready for you too. You understand? As we, as we prepare What's going on in our, we're going to have storms. Brothers and sisters, we cannot get out. It's, it's going to happen. You're going to have storms. But in the midst of that storm, you have an anchor. In the midst of that storm, God is with you in that boat. You have to believe that. We have to trust in God and believe in that. I want to close with this. <clears throat> is this. <clears throat> wow. Got carried away. Sorry. How many, how many of us know that sometimes you've got to face that giant? Anybody? Sometimes you've got to face that storm. You see, David could have said those things, they called us all, yeah, I'll, I'll take care of him. And I could have copped out ran like the rest of them are doing. You know, how many have done that before? Yeah, yeah, I've done it. Excuse me. Anybody? I'm a man of faith until I walk out the door. Then, wow, I lost it. Go back into that church and get it then. He lost it. Go back and get it. Here it is, this. There are times when God's going to make you face that giant. How many know that? There's going to be times when God's going to say, you're going to face that storm. But in the midst of that storm, I am there with you. Listen to what David said to, to Goliath. He says this. David said, and it's found in verse 43 of chapter 17. It says, David said to the Philistine, you come up against me with swords and spears and javelin, but I come up against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. Woo! 
the God of the armies of Israel who you defile. This day the Lord will hand you over to me and I will strike you down, cut off your head. Today I will give your carcass to the Philistine army, to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. That's what I want to tell you about, brothers and sisters, is this. You serve a God of Israel that is going to hand the carcasses over to the birds of the air when you slay that giant in your life. Praise God. This is who you serve. I love it. David prophesied before it even happened. Anyway, I'm going to cut your head off. And then, by the way, after I cut your head off, I'm going to give your body to the carcasses of the birds of the air. And everybody is going to know there is a God in Israel. Today, brothers and sisters, there is a God that is over New Hope Bible Church and over this body of believers right now. God is given, wants to give you hope for what the future is. He wants to give you hope for what the present is. And he wants to let give you hope for what, he don't care about what happened in your past. He don't care. He wants to set you free. He wants you delivered and set totally free from your past so you can go out with joy, singing. How many know when David struck down Goliath, the whole armies of Israel changed? Everybody? How many know that? Because they rose up and they began to kill the Philistines when they saw the giant fall. The children of Israel said, hey, check this out. Let's go. It was amazing. When we begin to slay giants in our own life, we attach other people and say, come on, you can do it too. You can do it too. Don't give up hope. Don't quit. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There's hope in Christ Jesus. How many know that? Amen. Grab somebody's hand. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I just ask you that this word has been spoken to us this morning. Lord God, that you cement it in our heart. Lord God, I want to just praise you for what's coming up ahead, Lord God, as we begin a new chapter. Lord God, we're looking and we're excited for you, what you've got planned for us, Lord God, here at New Hope Bible Church. Lord God, that you have spoken to our forefathers 70 years ago, Lord God. Lord God, when you had the hope and a vision that you gave them, Lord God. Father God, that they dug out the basement with their hands, Father God, with the shovels. Lord God, they knew, Lord God, that there was a, you called a people to be here as a body of believers. And Lord God, we're so thankful for them. Lord God, but we're so thankful for what we got coming in our future, Lord God. I just ask you to be with your people this morning, Lord God, that anyone, Lord God, is right now that is feeling a spirit of hopelessness, Lord God, that their spirit is being renewed right now in you. Lord God, we want to thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in our house. And we want to thank you for everything that you're doing right now in our lives, Lord God. Lord God, I ask you that we walk by faith and not by sight, Lord God. And we just ask you this in Jesus' most mighty name. Amen. Hug on somebody. Have some coffee. Anybody, you seeing people are missing today? Or some people are sick, Lord God. So be praying for them. Even reach out and touch them. Just give them a call, all right? All right. Have some coffee. Bless you. When life's doing me wrong Gotta shake the dust off my feet And keep marching on When trouble weighs me down And brings me to my knees Lord, my needs are many But that's a pretty, yeah, a pretty good place to be